Hey there! Today we're going to talk about this pen, uh, which is a Schaefer Imperial 440. Someone gave this to me, I purchased a pen of him, and he gave me this along with it, which is very nice, I love the pen. Uh, but I noticed something that is uh, uh, that, that needs a little bit of tune-up. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the pen, and look, just look at the nib, it's a beautiful inlaid nib, nothing wrong with that. Um, but this is a, a, well, a vintage pen, I suppose. Uh, I don't think these are made anymore, um, at least not in this shape. And here you have a very nice old-fashioned converter. I'm going to take that out for a second. And what, what is the problem here? Well, this is an aerometric converter. For those of you not familiar with that, you see these in a couple of vintage pens. They don't always look like this, but the basic features are always the same. You have a pressure bar and you have uh, an ink sack, a rubber sack or a, you know, some type of material, rubber or, or uh, sometimes they use ply glass or whatever, but in any case they use it, this rubber sack. Now the problem is that um, you, you may be able to see it right there there is a bit of a hole and uh, if, if you push this then ink sort of blubbers out a bit uh, and I'm, I, I may well have caused that, that uh, problem. I'm not saying that the person who gave this pen to me did that. Um, of course, you know, as a somewhat vintage pen, this stuff can deteriorate. It's, it's rubber. Um, so today I thought we were going to have a look at what you can do about that. Because I have shown, I've shown you how to resack a pen in my, my uh, Waterman 503 video. Um, but this is a little bit more difficult. I mean, it's a sack but uh, you can't access it because this plastic thing is in the way, you cannot get the sack out. So how do you get the sack out? Because obviously it's possible, but the, the, the question is how, how exactly would you go about that? Well, one tool that is really, really versatile and very useful for uh, fountain pen uh, people who want to do some basic repairs is a crochet needle. Uh, you can purchase these from almost any hobby supply store um, or, or you know, arts and crafts store. Um, some, some so you've got some of those wool stores, or, or you know that kind of stuff where you buy pieces of cloth. Um, and the funny thing about a crochet needle, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't know a thing about crocheting or crochet, whatever you call that, is that it has a little harpoon-like hook on there. You see that? Uh, that's very, very useful because this thing has a very small diameter. Uh, if you, you really want to know, I have a I have some calipers here. Okay, so this is what about two millimeters or something? Uh, that's uh, that's that's really not a lot, um, and uh, you know that, that's very useful because that means you can stick it in a lot of places. And one of the places you can stick it in is right there. You see that it's going to fit in there. Now, of course, you have to be careful. I'm not sure whether you can actually hit the the sack, poke at the sack, um, but that's not really a problem because that sack needs to be replaced anyway. So this is the easy part. And what you can do is you see that little hole. In my experience, a lot of this stuff is actually just just friction fit and not actually glued in place. Uh, if it is, you if you don't can't pull it out, you can always try to to heat this up a bit. Um, but for me. I think I'm just going to give this a shot. So here we have the crochet needle. I stick it in that hole and I try to hook that hook behind the, the rim of the plastic. And I'm going to see what I can do in that regard. All right, there we go. So it took a couple of attempts, but I've got it. Um, always have to fiddle around a bit with that. You have to be careful. You don't want to do too much damage to the hole. Um, but I, I think I've, I've been pretty careful there. All right. And then you have that sack. Well, that sack is something you can uh, uh, just sometimes pull it out with your fingers. But as I have this hook here, I'm just going to try and put that in. And there we go. Sack comes out. Here we have that sack, and you see there is some. There's a hole right there. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but it's it's in there. Okay, Let's zoom out a little bit more. Give me a little bit more space to work in. Now, what we need is a sack that's going to fit in there. Um, let's see what sizes I've got here. 
I think even the smallest one of these are going to be a little bit too tight. Yeah, no, that's not going to fit. Let's see if I have something else. Just fiddling around with some sacks. Uh, you can buy these in assortments. And right now, I think this is going to be a little smaller than what I have there. But I can probably fit that over that nipple. Yeah, that should work. All right. So what I'm going to do, let me see if this fits. Actually, I think that's a pretty nice, decent fit. You see, it's it can be depressed. Um, so what I need is I'm going to pull that down a bit so that the, the top of the sack doesn't actually hit the top of that. I want there to be some air insulation. So I, I push it in all the way, then I pull it out, just about two millimeters or something. It's not that easy because it sticks a little bit. Easiest way is to just grab this with your nails and pull. Alright, that looks good to me. Of course, then we have that, um, that nipple. It should fit over that nipple. I think this is about good. Yeah, that looks good to me. It'll fit on that nipple, be pushed back a little bit. Alright, then I just take something I can cut on. Uh, here we have my little punch block, knockout block. I'm going to really squeeze this with my nails so that I see where I should cut that. And then you take a sharp knife, a straight cut, as straight as you can make it, it's always difficult, and you're done. Alright, so now I need to glue that in place. Some people use nail polish. I really like shellac. Shellac is uh, usually widely available. This is from Richard Binder, but you can get this from a lot of sources. Uh, Anderson Penn sells it. There are some sources in the UK. Um, so there's some options. I always like to shake that a bit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is open this up. You don't need that much of it, but you don't need too little either. So we're just going to give this a nice covering. I always like to go about halfway over that nipple, so I don't smear it all the way to the end, but it's about halfway through, because when I'm going to push that sack on, uh, it's going to push that stuff down a bit anyway. Uh, you can use a sack spreader, some people like to use a, a pair of tweezers like this. Um, for me, personally, uh, I, I think this is pretty nice. You see, you don't even need a tool. Sometimes it's easy to just slip, slide this on there. All right. Now, ideally, I'd like to leave that to dry. I'm grabbing something here. A little bit of talcum powder. Because the big trick, talcum powder is good because it's going to absorb some of the moisture and it's going to keep that sack in a good state. I'm not going to ink it up. I'm going to leave this to dry for a night. There we go. Um, now, something I will do, I've just, I was just powdering that. Something I will do, uh, this will have to slide back on there, and that is not always very easy. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a Q-tip, I happen to have one here, I'm going to take just the smallest bit of silicon grease and I'm going to put that right there. In principle, silicon grease shouldn't really do anything bad to the sack and this is just the tiniest bit just to make sure this slides in a bit easier. I, I've used a relatively small sack now um, but sometimes, you know, the sack can give some friction and you get issues with that. Um, just going to push that back in. Now what I like to do, and this is not the most sensitive of things to do, but I like to put this on something like metal and just give it a 
a few simple taps. I'm using the side of a hammer here. I think that gives me some extra control. And now I'll use that bit. There we go. It's in there. It's tightly, securely. It operates. I'm not going to operate it too much. Uh, just so that, that shellac can dry. I'll leave it for a night and we're done. How about that?